video. We thought at the Barmy Army and Barmy Travel we'd give you a little insight into what touring life is like. I've got with me Paul Burnham, co-founder of the Barmy Army here to answer a few questions that we've had submitted um, over the course of the past two weeks. So I'm going to ask these questions to Paul and then um, we'll, we'll have a little chat about it and it'll give you all the information you'll want if you're looking to come on tour in the future or trying to plan ahead in these crazy times. So, Paul, thanks for doing this for us. Pleasure. So, straight off the bat, we're going to um, kick off with what is your most memorable touring experience? It would have to be when it all started, Chris, at the, the 94.5 tour. Um, it was a monster tour for me. I, I left my job at British Airways. I had a job to go back to in May 95. I left these shores in October 94. Uh, the Ashes tour in those days wasn't just back-to-back -back, uh, test matches. There was lots of uh, in-between games, places like Bendigo and Newcastle. So that was an amazing tour for me. It obviously, was uh, I didn't go out there to, to be involved in the setting up of the Barmy Army. So I remember that tour, even though it's 25 years ago, better than a lot of the ones since, funnily enough, because the ones since you're, you're trying to be involved in in helping everyone else and you're still obviously having a good time don't get me wrong but you know you're there trying to organize things so my favorite memories are all going back to then all the all the legends my co-founder dave peacock who was uh, the main man on that tour undoubtedly with his you know singing and, and getting everybody to go he looks very much younger than he does now like we all do um and then all the characters on that tour the original barmy army boys most of them had their own songs, um, and it was a new thing. It was, you know, unconditional support for the England cricket team that the Aussies famously and still can't to this day compete with because they've still only got the same three songs. <laughs> um, and they couldn't understand it because they couldn't understand why we were still supporting our team even though they were losing. It just doesn't doesn't fit their DNA as, a, as an Australian, I guess. Said in true Barmy Army fashion, Paul. I like to hear it. Now, um... Why would you recommend people to travel on tour with Barmy Travel as a member of the Barmy Army? Um, well, listen, I think, as you know, Chris, we do encourage people to go independently. I think in light of what's happening, I think that the safety and, and everything that you get by going on an official tour package is, is definitely the right way to go forward. So I think, you know, the horrible conditions and environment we're in at the moment is um sort of pointing towards doing that in the future and i do think when it first started no di no disrespect to the people that represented barmy travel in the early days um they tended to be from thompson who were our partners at that stage but we've got another thompson andy thompson who for nine years has been really good at bringing together the the barmy army hardcore and the people that are quite often on their first trip to wherever it might be and I think the Barmy travel people have realised it isn't, the Barmy army aren't this, maybe perceived sometimes as everybody knowing each other and a bit cliquey, you know, that, that's really not the way it is. It's just people that have met each other on previous tours and when they see each other again in another country, they they be at the bar with that person first. That doesn't mean that they won't join in. And, and obviously everyone that goes on a Barmy travel package is, is there quite often, um, you know, with people that are on their first tour or people that... They will, they will, um, you know, develop lifelong friendships with. I think, yeah. as I said, it started off as another tour company. I now think it's the perfect one. I think you can pop in and out when you fancy it. Um, some of the other tour groups, you know, it's the way that they run things, which is their entitlement tends to be a little bit um, regimented. Whereas the Barmy Army, you know, something seems to be going on every single night, and and you can pop in and out without. Uh, missing out if you know what I mean and I defy anybody to go to every single event that we put on including the breakfast and the, and the HQ every night because I think that's burning the candle at both ends and then again so it's not that advisable but I think we're in a really good position now as Barmy Travel it really reflects what we stand for as the Barmy Army and it gives people the chance to write from ball one literally um, be amongst people like-minded people that want to be active supporters as opposed to passive fans, which is what we, we always say. Great answer. And I think there's the, the element of security as well that travelling with Barmy Travel offers. When the tour got cancelled two days before people were flying to Sri Lanka, having the safety net, knowing that you were fully covered. And, and within the same day the tour got cancelled, I know that the Barmy Travel reps were ringing all the clients, um, issuing them full refunds 
right there and then. So it's a testament. Yeah, I think it's nice that you've got that type of, I mean, and, and the other thing that we do, another Andy Thompson initiative was to have these big forums, you know, one in the Midlands, one in London, one up north, Sheffield, round your way, so that people can go to that, particularly for the Ashes, the type of thing we're going to look to do before all tours. Um, you know, one of the main Barmy Army guy stands, Semco, is, is, you know, normally gets a get-together for people that are going to a, the country, you, people are invited to that. Um, so I think, yeah, the, the information that you can get before you go on tour is, is second to none with our guys. And I think it gets better and better. And the great thing is, you know, the reps that we use tend to be the same faces now. The turnover of staff at Gulliver's, who are our back end now, is, isn't so much. And of course, there's, there's some great reps. Andy's no longer doing it, but you've got Adam Canning, who's new to us, that's brilliant at it. And as you know, we're, we're trying to mix a lot more and do the same travel arrangements as people on their first tour so that everybody gets to understand how it works, um, you know, as the tour's going on and before it starts, as opposed to at the end, which is, you know, clearly a bit too late. Yeah, very true. Absolutely. So uh, moving on to the next question. You've obviously been on a lot of tours, Paul. What's the best atmosphere that you can remember? Listen, I think the atmosphere is uh, the atmosphere in Australia is always great. Um, and I'll give you two examples in Australia. 0-6-7, we lost the Ashes in Perth. We went three two down with two to play. Um, and I'll never forget the security people were taking pictures of us at about twelve o'clock and saying, you know, this is brilliant. You guys are still supporting your team. At five thirty, when we were still singing. They weren't so happy because obviously they thought they were going to get a bit of an early trap and get themselves home. <laughs> and um, we just carried on singing. It was relentless, but it was really patriotic. So, you know, that sums up where you are with it. It's the unconditional support, what I keep mentioning, but it's very important because that's what Barmy Army is. And then you go to 10-11, as I call it, the, the Boxing Day Massacre, where, um, you know, we bowled them out for whatever it was, 120, 130, and we beat their score with no wickets down. I mean, that's just, you know, that, those things don't happen. And watching the Australians leave the ground, it was <laughs> amazing. But every day in Australia, win or lose a day, just sitting with our guys and listening to the banter is second to none. And there's been so many people that have come up to me over the years and just said it's amazing sat with the England fans amongst the Barmy Army. You know, thousands of Aussies everywhere. And, and, you know, we do love them. We like to beat them. But we don't want to be sat next to them all day over in Australia because... Normally they are winning the cricket. We're winning the song contest, and you'd rather sit amongst us than than have them in your ear squeaking all day long. So it's um, yeah, it's an amazing atmosphere there. Then you, you know, the subcontinent, Sri Lanka is a great place. I never forget the 2001 series over there. Duncan Fletcher and everyone singing his name, and the the atmosphere there from the Barmy Army section that we had and that we continue to get. Gauls are another great place. So atmospheres all, all around the world, Chris. Uh, are amazing. And the Caribbean, as I always say, it's the home of cricket. Just go in there. They love anyone, you know, particularly Barbados, but Antigua and wherever the other test matches are in the Caribbean, they're all worth going to. And just having that, um, you know, recognition from people that love their cricket and are really good at the game over in the Caribbean, it's just lovely being a part of their infrastructure, whatever it is, even if every now and then everything's 10 minutes a bit, 10 minutes late on a good day. Generous. But, yeah. you know, just accept it and that's the Caribbean for you. Amazing place to go. I'd recommend it to everybody. The Ashes is, as I said, unbelievable. And the subcontinent, places like Sri Lanka and, you know, India's got its pluses as well. This day-nighter, if we if we get it next year, would be amazing. I think what you said almost is that every tour is brilliant in so many different ways. But yes, I completely agree with you. Zealand, yeah, it's been it's been a tough life for 25 years, mate. I tell you, <laughs> very good. And obviously, the Barmy Army name is synonymous with cricket now, and a global name. And that word Barmy is pretty cool. Now, do you have to be Barmy to be in the Barmy Army? No, I think you just got to be patriotic, as as I call it. Um, you know, we, I call ourselves active supporters, and, and what I mean by that is that we're prepared to to join in, make some noise. Starts with Jerusalem, just for you know, just after the the first ball's bold, as you know, and that atmosphere, it just gets you off to a really good start every day. And I guess a lot of the people that sing the songs, bless them, are, are characters a little bit because you, you've got to have some balls to, to actually... You know, imagine if you if you try your new song at quarter past 11, you've got to be sat there till six o'clock with everybody looking over. So there is a bit of pressure yeah. on, um, on the singing, but not if you're just going to join in with the, 
with the key guys. And, and as you know, everyone's very keen to come up with ideas and rewrite um, the songs. As I always say, it's more like Lemon and McChutney than Lennon and McCartney. But it, it's great fun, you know, all thinking that we uh, we can put a few tunes together and sing some songs. But, uh, you know, fun's the key word. Can anyone write a song, Paul? Sorry? Can anyone write a song? Can anyone come up with a song? Yeah, of course they can. Hand it on bits of paper to Billy or, well, we haven't got Billy anymore, but whoever the the new trumpeter or trombone or band, whatever whatever comes in the future is, that's what it's all about. The great thing about cricket is you've got all those, you know, you've got the build up to the test match. Even on the day, if you've got a song, you can bring it over during the day or at lunchtime or at the end of the day for the next day. That's the great thing about it. You don't get that chance in football, which is, let's be honest, that's where a lot of it comes from, is recycling old tunes. Yeah. Try, uh, trying to do the football stuff, but in a cricket in a cricket way without the swearing, unless it's uh, the Mitchell Johnson song, you know. <laughs> Some exceptions, though. Now, question: the next question we've got is, what's your opinion on the ingredients to make up a good test match? Um, five days. Going to the last few overs of five days, ideally, I guess. Yeah. The sun. And, and uh, I mean, the big thing, without being too anarchy about cricket, but a decent wicket. So, you know, so that if a batsman's a good batsman, he can get some runs because it plays nicely and there's something in it for the bowlers and maybe even uh, the spinners on day four or five as well. Um, so something for everybody, really. But, you know, test match cricket is, there's a clue in the name, as people always say. And I think going to the fifth day is great. It's also brilliant for the Barmy Army because we tend to be the only ones in the ground and we can all get together and, and make a difference like we did in Cape Town just uh Seems like years ago, Chris, but only a few months ago. Special moment that in Cape Town, wasn't it? Unbelievable. It, it really was. I must admit, I wasn't I wasn't in the main bit of it all the way through that test, but to be able to go around there and join the boys who have been um, slogging away in the sun every single um, session of that test match was unbelievable. And I think, you know, that's as big an influence as I think the Barmy Army's had for a while. And, and the players are now not afraid to come out and say that, not surprisingly us singing their name and getting behind them as they bowl, it does make a difference. You know, in the heat and everything else, you can put, as I've been saying for years, you can put a yard of pace on a bowler, which might get you a wicket. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? We can't go out and do it ourselves. But isn't it great that through some effort, you know, a lot, a lot less effort than they're putting in, but still effort, that we can make a difference. And as I've always said to our, our biggest critics, it isn't just we're going there to be in the limelight and occasionally get on the camera. Genuinely not. We're there because we love cricket. We're spending thousands of pounds. And we realised very early on in this equation that we can make a difference. And singing the guys' names and getting behind them with tunes can influence them. Very well said, Paul. Very well said. I hope you were listening, critics. Um, so moving on to the next question. Why choose Barmy Travel as opposed to other tour cricket touring operators? Um... Again, I go back to what I was saying, Chris. I think the experience we're now getting, because uh, the history of it's quite important. We tried to do it years ago, as you all know, as Barmy Army Travel, um, and didn't put enough margin on it. We didn't have enough staff, and there was all sorts of issues with it. It was lovely to then work with Be Away, who were brilliant partners for us. And then, you know, again, from a great relationship with Jeremy and the boys there, we've moved on to to two East Stroke Thompson and, and now it's Gulliver's. So that their bit's changed. But I think it's what we learn, because obviously we didn't go into it as tour operators as such, but I think we've yeah. now got the balance right between the link between Barmy Army and what you what you expect as a travel company as well. We made a few had a few errors in South Africa on the recent tour. The great thing I like is that we all get together at the end of the tour and we talk about the things that could be better. And you've got clients that will tell you they love this, they love that, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? I'm really looking forward to picking up on that constructive feedback and making everything for the future the best tour you can have. And that's nothing against, you know, the, the other guys. Let's call them competitors. I don't view them as competitors. I view them as, you know, mates, the boys at Hauser and Sarah Malin and, you know, a lot of those companies. Um, they're all great people. We're all there supporting England. We just tend to do it in a, in a slightly different way. But... Um, as I said, I don't view it that we're better than that. We're just different. Um, and, you know, be, me being the type of person that would want to go and support England actively, and, and the most important thing to be the ticket I get and the atmosphere I get in the ground, we would deliver that better than anybody. Sorry, we will. Um, but I like the fact that we're getting the other bits right as well now. So, 
you know, I'd highly recommend to go with Barmy Travel, but equally, you know, so if you feel that would you, you get, want to go with one of the others, go for it. So Barmy Travel, you get the experience as well as a well-organised cricket touring package is essentially what you say. Yeah. You've got the, the back end there is, is wonderful. You know, these guys know what they're doing at Gulliver's and, and obviously they have a different Gulliver's themselves. It's a tour company that tends to be for, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, less active supporting, I guess. They, they're more there, you know, to watch the cricket. Not in silence, but, you know, quietly. Some of them will come and join the Barmy Army. The Barmy Army, as you know, is really about creating an atmosphere and getting behind the England boys, particularly when it's gone quiet. You know, they do need some energy and I do think that we are capable of, of generating that for them. And, and it's, as you know, it's great fun doing it. But I think Barmy Travel's the best, but I'm always going to say that because that's exactly, you know, the type of people I'd want to travel with, like-minded fans. But I think it's brilliant that the number of people that go away support in England. And I do like the fact that the England boys, they don't just single out the Barmy. I mean, because it's everybody that's spending their money to go and support England that creates the atmosphere. It's just us that make the noise. Good answer. Okay, now moving on to the next question we've had in. Which all-rounder have you most enjoyed watching on tour? Tough question, but I know the answer, I think. Well, Ben Stokes. Yeah, got to be. Got to be Ben. I mean, Cape Town, previous tour, that 200 with Johnny Bairstow, who is a great all-rounder to watch as well, by the way. Um, and then I love his knock in Perth, which is why, as you'll remember on the the recent tour, the 17-18 tour, was desperate for Ben to come out. All the shenanigans going on, you know, should have been there in my eyes, right from ball one. We shot ourselves in the foot, but that's another story. But I knew Ben would make such a difference, not just for the team, because the guy is an absolute legend. He's the best cricketer I've ever seen put on an England shirt. Certainly the most inspirational guy. A great vice-captain for Joe. I think those two as a combination is unbelievable. And watch Joe Root bring the Ashes back, by the way, on the next trip, because he's the only captain I can remember that's getting the chance to go back. And Joe will have made, he made 100 decisions on that last tour when we lost 5-0. He won't have got them all right. I'll tell you what, he'll get most of them right next time and that'll make a difference. But not having been there, that knock in Perth in 13-14 was unbelievable. Um, you know, you can tell the guy's not going to get intimidated by the quick bowling, which the Aussies are so renowned for and I was really looking forward for him taking them on and obviously giving it to them back with his bowling as well so watch out with Archer and Stokes over there uh, next <laughs> time with, with Freddie you know great legendary all-rounder did most of his good work in the in England in my opinion um, most of the great memories with him 05 and 09 the run out not too many abroad um, great lad a few stories not worth repeating here but by his own admission he um, he did like a beer sometimes on tour and, and got some great memories of a um, couple of nights there where, where Freddie's you know, nearby and had a great time. But I think Ben Stokes is your man for that. Totally. Um, Completely agree. Paul, there's been, a, there's, funny enough, there's been two questions coming from the live stream, so I'm going to ask you them. Yeah, Andy RP has asked you, quick question, name your most exciting England away day, England tour away. What's your most exciting tour? Um, well, 10 11 and get the, the winning the Ashes, Chris. You know, we've been going there 94. I think it's 90, well, you, you can do that, you can do the maths. Every England tour since 94 5. We've been thrashed on most of them. We've won the, on the odd test match, which is always memorable. 2003 was great to be able to tell the Aussies that we were undefeated that year because we lost the four before New Year, and that's the type of thing you hang on to. But 10 11 was unbelievable. The draw in Brisbane, the win in Adelaide. Um, you know, losing in Perth, which we all thought we would do, and the Mitchell Johnson bite, you know, when we sang the song, and all of a sudden, by the time Melbourne comes, we're laying into Mitchell, and he couldn't, couldn't bowl the ball straight. Tremendous. And we, and we beat them by an innings in, in Melbourne, an innings in Sydney. Yes, of course, we still have a good time when we lose. That's the Barmy Army, unconditional. But that doesn't mean that you're not allowed to have an even better time when you win. So, undoubtedly, it has to be the 10-11 tour. And as I said to you earlier, I'm really, really confident that this next tour we are going to be competing right up until the last test match, and I can't wait for it. I got a bit excited when you talked about it then. We're already excited for that one. Now, the next question I'm going to ask you is, what's the most memorable thing that you can remember as a supporter doing to show their dedication on a Barmy Army tour? Um, well, there's a couple of tattoos. 
that, that's dedication to me because I'm sort of scared of needles, which is um, interesting. One of those things. So Sean Patrick, Monty, a um, couple of boys that have been brave enough to go under the knife for their for their country. Didn't Sean Patrick get a tattoo and then we rebranded? Is that right? <laughs> Ah, yeah, we use that. You rebranded, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, um, but sorry, Sean. But I think the dedication is just the amount of amount of times that people go. I mean, that's dedication, isn't it? Travelling the way over there, and let's let's put it into perspective. You know, people have gone over there when we've really had very little chance of winning. A lot of these Ashes trips, people have gone over knowing and expecting England not to win, and have spent an awful lot of money. And as we know, it's quite expensive these days. Over in Australia, it's not three dollars to the pound anymore. Certainly, um, <laughs> but loads of people, too many to mention, to be honest, Chris, that have dedicated themselves to supporting England and travelled away and made it, um, you know, their dream trip. And hopefully, they they come back um, having enjoyed it and, and wanting to go again, which is what it's all about. It's a bit addictive, that's for sure. It certainly is. So, what's your most memorable moment you'd have? with a player whilst travelling on Barmy Travel and a Barmy Army Tour. What, what's the most memorable moment you've had? Well, I'll give you two. Um, Merrick Pringle, um, South Africa bowler. It was actually before the last day of the Wanderers, day five in the 95-6 tour, with Mike Athlin got 187 and batted very nicely with Jack Russell. We went out to a place called the Rattlesnake Diner the night before. <laughs> Mary Pringle was in there and uh, a very good friend of mine who's one of the original Barmy Army, this guy called Chopper and a guy called Stuart, it's all I remember, Stuart from Newcastle, I had a Newcastle top on and he'd done a thing the night before, I don't know whether you've ever seen or smelt or certainly had a straw rum, a straw rum is like, like, like petrol <laughs> and you have one or two or one's enough, two you're gone, <laughs> but this guy Stuart had 20 and Chopper told Merrick Pringle that he'd had 20 and Merrick Pringle said that's rubbish there's no way can anybody do that particularly one of you one of you poms etc etc got a bit um got a bit leery to be fair Merrick um anyway Stuart walked into the bar a bit later on and um Chopper coordinated that if he did the the trick of drinking 20 that maybe Merrick would drink five just 25 percent obviously Stuart drank the 20. God knows to this day how he did it, but he did. It wasn't a, it wasn't a magic trick or anything. It went down his throat. Unbelievable. Uh, and Merrick Pringle drank five and was completely gone till gone four o'clock in the morning. And we would have kept him out till, you know, to the start of play the next day if we could. But a girlfriend of his that was in there spotted what we were doing and dragged him home. He was in a real mess the next day. Um, so I remember seeing him not doing the, the throwdowns and whatever to get ready. And he opened the bowl in the next day and famously dropped a very easy court and bowl from Jack Russell at about half 11 in the morning, where he was clearly still struggling from the hangover that he got <laughs> from the rums and whatever he drank after that. Um, and there was a big stuff about that being sponsored by the Rattlesnake Diner and everything was great. He was laughing, I think even a few of the South African team. But at six o'clock, when Mike was still there batting, 187 not out, it wasn't so funny for the South Africans as they went by us all leaving the ground. And Merrick never played for South Africa again. So I guess it's one of those stories with an unhappy ending. But I try to apologise to Merrick. But I understand from what I hear, he's, that's not the only incident for him with drink. The other one, which again, drink related, I, I, uh, it's not to do with that, but it was in Sri Lanka in 03. And as you know, there's... The, the, the main patron we've had from the Barmy Army guy called Matthew Hoggard, an absolute legend, great lad, great Yorkshireman. Um, and we were in the bar in, um, in Colombo and him and Robert Croft had both found out that they weren't playing. So it was the day before the test match, the usual excitement we all had. And um, Matthew came into the bar, so did Robert Croft. And uh, the girl that was working for us at the time, Katie, spotted this and pointed out to me that Hoggy looked like he was angry and that maybe the Barmy Army guys and the other fans in there wouldn't hassle him too much. And it may be that me knowing him a little bit, why don't I take him away? So I did, got him in a tuk-tuk, said, come on, Hoggy, let's go out. Let's go and have a couple of beers. You can, you can tell me about, you know, what's happened. Let's go out and have a good time, which is what we did. So the two of us went out. We found a nice bar in, in quite near his hotel in a tuk-tuk. So it was a bar set back a bit and all the way through this, we were chatting away and I was probably boring him 
senseless with cricket stories and asking him questions. So it was good fun for me. I think he was having a good time. But we kept having girls randomly coming up to us, a Sri Lanka girl, every 15 minutes, coming up with the drinks and then trying to sit down. And Hoggy was just, I must have, couldn't have been that boring because he kept saying, no, no, go away, not interested. We're, we're talking, can't you leave us alone? And this happened about five or six times. Anyway, we got to a, a reasonable time where he suddenly looked at his watch and said, I better get back to the team hotel. I said, come on, let's go and get a tuk-tuk. I'll pay for this. I'll settle up. Um, we're getting the tuk-tuk and, I, and I'll take you back and I'll go back to the, the main bar. So we got out and the guy handed me a, a bill that was the equivalent of about £300. But what they tried to do, instead of just the beers that we'd had, they were trying to imply that the girl that we kept telling to, to go away because we were chatting, they were trying to bill us for that. Hoggy got pretty angry because he was angry anyway because he wasn't playing for his beloved England. So he wasn't. He was already pretty close to <laughs> the limit. Um, and I had to literally drag him into the tuk-tuk after paying the equivalent of, we just paid for the drinks, 50 quid, I think, whatever. <laughs> and I had to that. literally drag him into the tuk-tuk and drive off as there were three or four people running at us down the road. So um, I'd like to think I helped him out that night and, and we got away from um, a potential issue. Good. Now, great story. Absolutely fantastic story. Now, the final question that I'm going to ask you, Paul, is what is your favourite tour location? And I know it's a question you hate being asked. You've been asked it a lot over the years. If you had to name one, don't give me every tour impossible. What's your favourite? I think South Africa. I wish you could play the Ashes in South Africa. <laughs> Good half answer. The distance, half the price. Good answer, uh, Paul. You no know, weather, location. So, yeah, it, it has got to be South Africa, really. I love it over there. It's a great place. Um, so, there we are. My favourite location It would, would have to be Cape Town. Yeah, what a place and what a way to finish as well. Thank you to the two guys that have commented. Andy, if you want to find more out about Barmy Travel, if you just go in the description below... And you can go to barmytravel.com. There's a link in there. It has all the packages on. And if you want to find out about membership, there's also a link for barmyarmy.com in the description below. And um, Jack Mawson did ask a question as well. He's asked, um, oh, Paul, we've just missed one question. Do you think there'll be any cricket this summer? Yeah, I do. I do. I think there'll be some, um, I mean, let's be honest, Four-day cricket socially distanced anyway, isn't it, with the number of people that turn up? Maybe you'll have to go second and fourth slip, no first slip and third slip. Um, so socially distancing, why not, in the, in the county game? game. Um, no, I think they will be. I think they'll play the T20 Blast. I don't think they'll go for the 100 because they want the 100 to be a, you know, a massive Big. event with the overseas players coming in. Perhaps they won't be travelling. So I'd like to see the T20 Blast played because I think that's a great event anyway. A um, bit of county cricket, maybe just within small groups. So maybe, you know, the London group for the, I don't know, Kent, Surrey, Middlesex, Essex, whatever. Um, yeah. So I'd like to see some play just to keep everybody going. And But I don't think you need the crowds at it necessarily. It'd be nice to, the, the Sky package we're all paying. It'd be nice to see a bit of live cricket, wouldn't it? Absolutely, Paul. Completely agree with you. Now, thank you um, for watching. And make sure if you have any questions about Barmy Travel or Barmy Army, get in touch with us. We're always happy to answer any questions at all. Um, I'm Chris. I run the Barmy Army at the moment and the Barmy Travel guys will be more than happy to take all of your phone calls. Thank you to everyone for watching and see you on a tour very soon.